don't let the first hole at Blue Rock fool you. It's not too long, but you'll be facing a bigger green that slopes a little back to front and left to right. A great hole to warm up and get ready for the challenging holes to follow. Hole 2 presents the golfer with a not too long but very narrow green. You'll want to keep your tee shot to the left side where you may get a good bounce back toward the pin. Don't miss right, there's a steep drop off with trouble and water down the hill. Hole 3 will be the first of several where you cross water. It's a straightforward hole with an elevated green that requires a forced carry to hit the green. There are some deep bunkers guarding the green on both the left and right sides. Number 4 presents you with several rises and dips. Try to keep your tee shot on the front of the green and putt up the hill. This green slopes severely from back to front. Anything to left or right makes for a difficult recovery and probable bogey. At 250 yards, hole 5 is long with potential trouble on both sides. An errant tee shot can put you in a spot where getting even a putt at par can be a challenge. A 4 here is not a bad score. A straightforward but challenging hole describes number 6. This green is protected by bunkers on the left and right sides, but it does allow a ball to run between them and up onto the green. That's helpful because many players will be hitting a wood on this medium length hole that often plays longer into the prevailing wind. Hole 7 is unique and that it shares a double green with number 16, like several greens at St. Andrews in Scotland. This long par 3 has an out of bounds area on the left and a big bunker on the right making it a challenge to hit the green. Hole number 8 not only has length at 175 yards and a mall green, but is extremely narrow being guarded by large trees on both sides. Even a slightly errant tee shot is likely to hit the trees and drop down. Fortunately, once you get to the green, it's not too difficult to read and putt. Number 9 is our signature hole and one of the prettiest and most challenging par 3s on Cape Cod. The small green is well below you, guarded by bunkers and requires a carry over the water. Guessing the right club is a big challenge on this due to the large elevation drop and the constant Cape Cod winds. At 
160 yards, hold 10 plays longer for most people. Back across the water, it is a forced carry due to the severe upslope just short of the green. This hole has two of the deepest bunkers on Cape Cod that are well below the green's surface. Avoiding them is highly recommended. Number 11 would be our equivalent to Royal Troon's famous postage stamp hole. Despite only being 115 yards, it is a challenge to hit this very small green. A large bunker in front makes it a forced carry, and this green is extremely narrow. Any ball left or right of the green has a difficult chip shot with very little green to work with. The good news, any tee shot on the green leaves a makeable birdie putt. At 200 yards, hole 12 has a large and relatively flat green. There are bunkers short of the green on both sides. A well-played shot can run up between them on the green. There are trees left and right to make your recovery a challenge if you stray off the tee. Hole 13 at 150 yards is straightforward with a large bunker short and left of the green. If you can avoid that, this hole is a possible birdie. The green isn't too big and not too undulated, so anywhere on the green gives you a good shot at birdie. Another long par 3 that often plays into the wind is hole 14. A wood, hybrid or long iron shot can land short and bounce up the left half of the green. Any shot just a bit to the right will end up in the bunker and have a challenging recovery. The green is large and the right side has a lot of slope, making it a challenge to read and putt. The length of number 15, 180 yards, and the bunker directly in front of this green are its biggest challenges. Once you're on this large, relatively flat green, putting is not too much of a challenge. Number 16 shares a double green with number 7. Despite its size, this double green is clearly divided by a very large bunker, making hitting the green on 16 a challenge. There's a very large bunker to the left and some trees to the right of this green that will create a challenge if you stray in either direction. At hole 17, a bunker short of the green forces golfers to try to put the ball up on the green. Left and long are trouble on this hole with out of bounds and a steep drop off. This can definitely be a birdie hole if the pin is cut to the right half of the green. is a great finishing hole. It is long, pretty, and challenging. At over 180 yards, the golfers hit from an elevated tee across the pond for the final time to an elevated green. The back half of this green has as much slope as any green on Cape Cod. Keeping the ball short and right of the hole is a must, or you will likely three-putt your final green of the day.